too. Any questions about assignment one? If you do have questions about assignment one, you can interrupt or ask anytime. Assignment two will be about this stuff, by the way, the volume viz, less familiar territory, so to speak. So let's continue where we left off. We left off with interpolation. And what happens, you know, the effects of interpolation. By the way, I didn't mention that there are, there are more ways to interpolate. I mentioned nearest neighbor and trilinear and linear, but there are other ways too, um, bicubic and more complicated ways but they're all based on a, a number of neighboring or surrounding data samples. So the more neighboring and uh, surrounding data samples you use to interpolate, the more accurate your interpolation can be. That's the difference. So we're going to look at something called a conceptual volume visualization framework. This might remind you of something. Does this like remind anybody of anything <laughs> in the world? Anybody feeling like, I don't know, is there anybody here that's good at remembering things? Might look a little bit familiar. It, the, the, words, the words don't look very familiar, I guess. Maybe the drawing somehow, somehow. This is, this is like the volume visualization version of the visualization pipeline. So we had a lecture called the visualization pipeline. We also had something like a knowledge evolution pipeline, a ubiquitous pattern of knowledge evolution. So we had two pipeline-ish diagrams already in this module. This is another one. It's like a volume visualization pipeline. And there are two starting points. One is sampled data or measured data. That's data that's derived from an instrument, like in the x-ray I mentioned in the last lecture. There's also another source of data, which is analytical data or modeling that's derived from mathematical models and equations. That's like in the VIS pipeline, that's like the first stage of the VIS pipeline, data uh, acquisition. You know, you can compare it. It's, it's a more specific version of data acquisition. What's not shown here is the data enhancement that's left out of this picture, but it does actually exist in practice. And that's part of assignment two, actually. So there is a data enhancement phase that's not inside this uh, diagram, but certainly there's an interpolation happening in this, in this framework that's not depicted here. Then we have voxel space, a voxel space representation of the data, or, a ge or a, um, you know, a, a, a um, polygonal representation of the data. So this is this is all about mapping the visualization pipeline phase called visualization mapping, which is taking data and mapping it onto geometric shapes. For example, voxels or cells or triangles, and we can. Tr what's different is we can make a transition between voxel space 
which is discrete to geometric surfaces, which are analytic. In other words, they don't require interpolation. So we can transition from voxel space with a process called isosurfacing, which we talk about in a special lecture, and we can transition from geometric surface or analytic space for, to voxelization, which is another, the opposite process. And then in the VIS pipeline, we had the last phase, which was the projection from 3D to 2D in the computer graphics business. That is here as well, except it's two different methods. One is direct volume rendering, it's called, or surface rendering. And then we have our projection. The pixel space is the projections into the 2D image, the image that we see in the end, which is also part of the standard visualization pipeline. So this is like a special viz pipeline for volume visualization. It's a more specific. Uh, pipeline. It ha it's it's more complicated because it has two two paths and then a, a transition in between the two paths and, and two two ways to end. And this is hopefully going to make more sense as we talk about it. <coughs> Here is an example of the volume visualization conceptual framework. I, I really could probably call it the Volvis pipeline. That would be a, probably a better name for this, actually. So this example starts with sample data. So da data coming from something like computer tomography or an MRI scanner or something like that, CT or MRI scanner, typical in, typically used in medicine. Those produce a volume of data on a 3D grid. And we can represent those with voxels, like we mentioned in the last lecture, or cells, either, either one. And then we can take those voxels or cells and compute surfaces. We can extract surfaces from the volume. That's a special lecture. And then those surfaces are represented. Anybody know what surfaces are typically represented by? In, in computer graphics and visualization? Name? Triangles. Name? Tom. Tom. Triangles. Yes, Tom. Yes. Triangles. So we've gone from cubes over here to triangles via, with a special surface generation process. And then we project the triangles to image space. So there's the CT measurement, that's data acquisition. Isostack computation, that's data enhancement. Isostack computation just means arrange the samples in a cubic space with evenly spaced samples in all three axes, like X, Y, and Z. And then compute surfaces, which is a special lecture. We don't know how to do that at this current stage. And then we render the surfaces using our OpenGL, favorite OpenGL library. And these are different surfaces. You can see there's like a skin surface there. There's a surface for the bones. There's a surface for some soft tissue. Looks like intestines or something, or I, I don't even know. And so on. That's one example of the volume viz pipeline. Here's another example of the volume visualization pipeline. Magnetic resonance imagery, so an, a magnetic resonance measurement that's sampled data from a, a MRI machine, for example. Very expensive. And then that data is represented by a set of voxels. Again, we compute, we, we arrange the data on a 3D cubic grid, where the spacing between samples along x, y, and z is the same. And then, instead of computing surfaces, we, we do something called volume rendering, and we actually just render the cubes using a special technique. 
a call volume rendering. In this case, it's a type, it's called maximum intensity projection, which we haven't discussed yet, but there's a special lecture for that as well. And then we end up again with an image that looks like this, for example, the vessels and the hand. So, yeah. In the next lectures, next lectures one is going to be on isosurfacing and then after that we're going to go into volume rendering techniques so yep those are future lectures that's another example of traversing the vis volume vis pipeline here's another example on the other side we start with analytical data or data defined by a set of equations you will see that actually in assignment two. You'll see examples of both of these in assignment two. Very exciting. Then instead of representing it with a set of voxels, we can represent it with surfaces. We can generate surfaces directly without having to do any uh, special computations because for every, with analytical data, the data is uh, evaluated as a function of position. So you just input the position and then you get as output the data itself, the analytical data. And we can compute surfaces directly using triangles and then render those triangles with a standard surface rendering set of triangles. And this is what it can look like, right? A potential function and then um, <clears throat> show it using ray tracing. <clears throat> so hopefully that makes sense. That is like the volume visualization version of the Viz pipeline.